system, all that good stuff. <laughs> It was good until Ben got here. <laughs> Just playing. Ben, Ben's a big help. All the scriptures you see up here every week, that's Ben putting that together. If we have any videos, it's all Ben. So appreciate you, Ben. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's bow our heads before God in prayer. Father God, in Jesus' name, we come before your throne of glory. It should be our favorite place to be, Father. Lord, I just pray today that you have already prepared our hearts to receive the message that you're bringing today, Father. And Lord, I, I, I can't do this without you, so I just, I just want you to be here. I want you to be, just use me as your mouthpiece this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the honor and the opportunity to do your will, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> This past couple of months, I've been in a place of, uh, and, and these songs that, that we sang today kind of all go right along with the lines where, where I've been. My voice is a little weird, so just bear with me on that. <clears throat> What's that? <laughs> I started it right. <laughs> right on, right on. The guys have me in a place for a while. Um, Spiritual warfare, you know, and the, all these songs that we were singing today, they talk about spiritual warfare. And today we're going to talk about two words that are in the Bible called stand firm. And we're going to get into that a little bit. <clears throat> but I just want to say something to you because I know, I know we've all had struggles in life. Some of you are struggling right now. But... Look around this room. It's full of people who God has delivered. It's full of people who God has changed their lives. I'm one of them. I was, I was, you know, I wasn't the worst person, but I wasn't the best growing up, and I didn't think I was going to see 21, to be honest. Uh, <clears throat> back in those days, I didn't really have hope, you know. How many of you feel like you don't have hope, you know? Well, I have felt that way at some point. So when you feel that way, you're like a prime target for the enemy. And the, some of the things I want to talk about is, like, what are we feeling? You know, what are we dealing with? What makes you feel hopeless, Stephen? You know? Because God said, I sent my son to die for you. So basically, you're for nothing but hope. Because anything that was wrong in us before... He fixed it. Anything that is wrong in us now, he's working on it to fix it. None of us are perfect. I don't care who you are. How long have you been a pastor for? Too long. I'm joking. <laughs> Not long enough because I avoided the call yeah. since I was 17. Yeah, are you perfect yet, though, since you started? Yeah. yeah. Are you ever going to be perfect? We're working for it, working on it, right? That's right. Yep. We're a work in progress. The point is, your life means something. Amen. And when you feel hopeless, that's the devil lying to you, saying, Stephen, there's nothing good about you. That's spiritual warfare because he's getting into your mind, and if you let him in, that's the problem right there. You let him in for a second, and he wants to kick the door down. Yeah. We're going to go over some scriptures here in a little bit. That we're, I'm going to show you how Jesus taught us how to combat those thoughts, how Jesus taught us that. But let's start with scriptures, James 5, 8, and 9. You guys thought we were out of the book of James, huh? I, love it. <laughs> I, I was picking up on this last week. It says, you too... Be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Now, if there's any other reason for hope, if, if you're ever looking for one, there it is right there. Jesus, His coming is near, right there. He's coming. That's what we hope for in this life. You know, before when He, was, when he came as a baby, 
the whole the whole world was waiting for him. He was that hope. And he came. We believe that, right? He came as a baby, born of a virgin. He grew up, he taught, he gave us scripture. He he showed us how to live this life. He he was the example for us, but then he took our place on the cross. He said, look, you can't come to heaven because there's so much sin in your life. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that sin on me and I'm going to go up on that cross. And he didn't just say it. He did it. My mouth is really dry. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. There's a scripture in Revelation, and he says, he's knocking on our door. Here I I am. I stand and I knock. But if you will just open the door, I will come in and I will eat with you. That's how close he is right now. Stand firm, right? That's the word. Anybody have an idea what that means? Anybody want to take a poke at it? Go ahead. Yeah, you believe in this, right? You believe you're saved. You you believe that God chose you. Protect, I don't know, protect, um, protect, guard your heart. There you go. That's a good word. There you go. Stand strong to me means my action. We talked about that, didn't we, in the book of Peter? We are Christians, chapter one. Don't forget who you are. Don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer also. It means if you're going to call yourself a Christian, then apply that to your life. And let it change you. Your actions should show that. Amen? But don't give up ground. You know, the enemy has fought us, beat us up. Some of us have suffered. Some of us have lost a lot. Jeremiah, how much time did you lose? 14 years? So look, this is what I'm talking about. See, the enemy is a liar. He's an accuser. He is a tempter. Didn't that stuff look good, Jeremiah? It looked good, right? Yeah. But when, when you're sitting behind bars or, you know, some people lose time with their family, some people lose their family. You know who did that? The enemy, the enemy did that. We, we need to be prepared is what I'm talking about. Spiritual warfare is something that, what we talk about in the, in the class that I'm doing on Monday mornings, we know, if we know somebody's coming to kick in the door, if we know somebody is coming to bring war to my house, somebody's coming to your house and you know they're coming, what are you going to do? Prepare, prepare. Right. Yeah. You're not going to sit there and pretend, no, oh, it's not going to happen. But yet every day we're under attack by the enemy. We know it. And think about when you were a kid. How young were you when the enemy first started poking at you? Seven. So he starts at you when you're really young. He's really patient. He's going to start at you when you're young. He's going to feed you lies. You're worthless. You're no good. You're never going to amount to anything. That's what he says. But the, I love that song. The story of the cross says something else, doesn't it? Because you're so valuable to God that he came down. He left heaven to come down here and give his life for you. We got to hold that right here in our minds. Because when the enemy comes at us, the first place he attacks is our mind with that thought. But see, we need that helmet of salvation. That's spiritual armor that we need to put on every day. Every day I get up in the morning and I pray. I ask God every day because I can never leave my house. I should never leave my house without this armor. And every day I ask God in the morning when I'm, if I'm driving to work or I'm kneeling on the couch before I leave. I, I pray this prayer every day asking Him to cover me with the Holy Spirit. To put the, gar- the, the armor of God on me. And I pray each one of those things. The helmet of salvation. Don't let the enemy lie to me. And if he does lie, let me remember who I am. Let me not forget. And that's, that's what you have to do, Stephen. We have to remember every day to put that armor on. It starts there. We have to remember, like there's nothing that I can do. Did you, have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Yeah. 
You, you know, were the ones who baptized right, last year. All right. So you know what that means? It's done. It's done. You're his. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I was praying to God because I was given a word that kind of troubled me. And I started praying and God started showing me something. There, there's people that are Christian people that are walking around this life miserable. I had to say something to one of them because God gave me this spiritual anger. And I said, look, you're loved by God. Didn't He give you a second chance? This person had a heart attack. And you have a choice. Every day you have a choice to be joyful. You know, sitting in that negativity, sitting in that negative spirit, that's a choice. Because what happened is the enemy comes in with his lies. Nobody loves you. You know, nobody has time for you. That's the point where we got to nip it in the butt. That's the point right there. We got to say, you know, Satan, Satan, you're a liar. Look at all these people in this room that love me. Look at all the people in my life that God has put there that love me. Yeah, there might be some people that I really want to love me. There might be some people that I, I wish they loved me, but they should because they're family, right? But it doesn't matter because God loves you. And even if some of these guys aren't available, God's always available. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And uh, sometimes it's good to Well, this is what I'm getting at when I started talking with you. That little beautiful baby you have there. Don't think for a second the enemy's not coming for her. That should rise us, that should give us a righteous anger right there. Look how beautiful this baby is. I take the blame for kid. But listen to me, this is a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual battle. We got to get on our knees and pray every day for our children, for their future, because the enemy will come. But you know what's going to happen when you pray that prayer? We've been talking about prayer for a couple of weeks, right? When you pray that prayer, God, protect my daughter, protect my son, protect my kids. You know what God's going to do? He's going to put a hedge of protection around them. And when the enemy comes to attack, you know what's going to happen? Those angels that are watching your kids are going to flick them away and say, get out of here. That child belongs to God. Amen. That child belongs to the, the one true king. Amen? Amen. Amen? Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate plate of righteousness in place. The belt of truth, you know, it's, it says gird your loins. This is like this, your midsection. You know, and this is like the most important piece of armor. This is the truth. This is the foundation. Jesus says, I am the truth, right? In the beginning, what? Was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. That's the truth. You get that Word in you. You get that Word in your head, and you get it in your heart. How you doing, Brother AJ? You get it in your head, you get it in your heart, and guess what? You got the, heart, the helmet of salvation. And you got the breastplate of righteousness. And the enemy can't lie to you because you know the truth. If you don't know the truth, you will fall for the lie. Pick up the Bible. Read it. Get to a Bible study. Participate. Amen? Amen. Now, that was the long one. <clears throat> this is going to be the whole thing. Finally, be strong in the Lord in all his might and power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take the stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of, dark, of the dark world, this dark world that we live in, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now I want to go, there's a word in here <clears throat> that says principalities in a different translation. And when I look that up, and in the original writing in Greek. Principalities is the high rank. It's the highest rank. So we're not battling these demons that we battle, the darkness that we battle. It's, they're not beginners. They've been around a long time. We're, we're, we're fighting the highest rank in their army. 
That's what's coming at us. That's what's coming at you, and that's what's coming at me. But because you have Jesus Christ in your life, everything changes. Amen. There, there is a, a scripture when Jesus fasted, Matthew 4, 11. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. At the very end of it, when he was at his weakest point, that's when the devil came in and tempted him. Why did he wait that long? Because he's a coward. He's not going to come when we're strong. He's going to come when we're at that lowest part in our life. But Jesus says, all you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. That's it. And you can move mountains with that faith. Amen. What, what mountain in, is in your way? There's quite a few on that one. Okay. Every day, Stephen, this is what you do. You pray. Because Jesus says for us to pray. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you can't do it on your own, come to me. Come to Tina. Come to Pastor Jim. Pastor Tina. Prayer is the answer. Do you have faith? The size of a mustard seed, Stephen? Yes. You, you know what? There's, a, <laughs> there's another translation that's called a sycamine. And I just, I love it when God showed me new things. I just found this, talked about it in, in the Bible study, right? Sycamine tree. So there's three accounts of this story with the mustard seed. Two of them say you can get this mountain and you can remove it into the sea. One of them calls it a sycamine tree. The problem is not faith. It's not your faith that's the problem. See, and Jesus was talking to the disciples, and, and if you go back a couple in the story, think about the disciples, how they were given authority to go lay hands on people, and they were healed, and they did that. To go lay hands on people, and they cast out demons, and they did that. But there was this one case where they laid hands. Ten of them laid hands on this kid, and they couldn't, they couldn't cast the demon out. But here comes Jesus Jesus comes on scene, he lays hands on the kid, and it was done. And the disciples said, why, can't, why couldn't we do it? And you could. And, you know, Jesus' response was, oh, you have little faith. <clears throat> but the story of the sycamine tree tells something different. Because if you go back to what Jesus was saying, if he said all you need is a small mustard seed of faith, that's all you need, there's another problem that was stopping them from laying hands and healing. He was talking about resentment. He was talking about bitterness. The deep-rooted things. That's what he's talking about, Stephen. Think about this for a second. The sycamine tree in all of the Middle East, it's known for having the deepest roots. You, you could cut this tree off at the surface and it's still going to live because those roots go down so far that they tap into some water way below the earth. And the fruit that it bears is bitter. Yeah. See, before that scripture, Jesus is talking about offense. Offense. If you're offended, if you have bitterness, like that tree. Like that tree. Yes. <clears throat> See how Jesus was, I, I love how he does that. He puts, he's like, he, he paints pictures with words, doesn't he? Yeah. So he's saying the issue is not faith, it's there's something in your life that you're holding on to. You're bitter at somebody. You have some unforgiveness. You need to get that from the root and cast it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. See, he brought that to me because I was holding on to something. And I, I, I love it how God got, he has his word for me. And like, I, I love to learn, especially when it's for me. Like, God, I, I, I thought I let go of that. I cut it off at the surface. I said, I forgive. All is forgiven is what I said. But whenever somebody would bring up the topic, there was something in my gut that was bugging me. Obviously, I, I, didn't, I didn't get rid of that root. But, but because of this teaching that God showed me, every day I get up, and if I have to pray every day for the rest of my life, I'm going to ask God to get to the root of this problem and get it out. Get to the root of my bitterness and get it out. Get to the root of my unforgiveness. I don't want it. Because if I have this, it's going to prevent me from being used by you, God. See, God has plans for you, Stephen. We see your heart here. And it's not just Stephen. There's many of us that are dealing with things. Somebody hurt you in the past. Somebody abused you as a child. 
Maybe, maybe you didn't have parents growing up. And there's a bitterness that comes from that. I know, I didn't have a dad growing up. But listen, who's your daddy? Jesus. Here we go. See, God, God showed me that he's got me 100%. And as I said, even when other people are busy, God's never too busy for us. Yeah. Amen. So, the story goes, it wasn't the faith that was the problem. The problem was there was bitterness, there was resentment. So we think about the shield of faith, right? We, we, know, we know this, the armor of God, the shield of faith. So that shield of faith will, will block the arrows, the fiery darts of the enemy, right? So if you have bitterness in your heart, what Jesus is saying, he, he's linking it up to your bitterness and your unforgiveness. It's affecting your faith. So maybe you got a shield this big, size of Captain America's shield, right? You could have that shield, and the enemy could get over it, he can get under it, and he can get around it, because there's resentment and there's bitterness. It's not hurting anybody but you, Stephen. It was hurting me more than it was hurting anybody else. But God said, what he showed me was, if I have bitterness, not only does it affect me, but it affects the people around me. Amen. My wife's probably going to get tired of hearing me. Just shut up already, Ruben. You're complaining all the time. <laughs> <laughs> My bad attitude from this resentment, this unforgiveness, it's going to be seen. It's going to be felt. But what God showed me with this thing <clears throat> was that, that shield of faith that's affected by me. My resentment, when I got rid of that resentment, when you get rid of that resentment, when you get rid of that bitterness, when you get rid of that, that deep-rooted pain that you've been holding on to, guess what? That shield of faith grows. Imagine, you like Star Wars. Imagine a force field completely encompassing your body, Steve. Imagine that. That's the shield of faith. When you, when you get rid of all that junk and all that garbage, you're, you're set free. You yes, that's right. <laughs> So these disciples had that, they had that authority, but it wasn't working for them because they had something to work, they needed to work out. We're the same way. God has something that he wants to work out in you and me. If we don't let it go, it's going to affect our reach. So think about that, that shield of faith that now covers me. Now, once I let that bitterness go, I can lay hands on you. Amen. And there's nothing stopping God from working because my heart is right with him. What's the end of that prayer, that, that, that scripture we did last week? <clears throat> I don't know if I put that in here. Yep, I did. Listen, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. If anyone, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. Amen. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer, this is the part I'm talking about. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We've got to get our hearts right. Because sometimes the, the enemy is our problem. A lot of the times, and a lot of times he's the one that put in the groundwork that has you in this place where you can't get rid of the bitterness, you can't get rid of the past. But I want to say to you today, it's not happening anymore. If somebody abused you, if somebody mistreated you, it's the past, it's done, it's not happening anymore. What is happening right now is you have a new relationship with Christ. And he says, I come to make you new. I come to give you a new life. Turn away from that old life, Brother AJ. It didn't get you anywhere great, did it? But he says, I got something for you. And thank God that he is always extending that invitation to come a little further. The first invitation was, come follow me. Remember that? It was like an invitation to salvation. Come follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. And I will make you fishers of men. So he... Not only just that statement alone says you're good, you're safe, but I got a plan for you. 
Amen? Amen. Yep. Ruben. Who's it? You know, earlier you were saying the devil is like a like a murderer and all this, he's also a thief. Yep. He steals your soul and your life. That's right. Noel? I know this is kind of like a, I don't know if it's a stupid question, but how it says, like, uh, God will, you know, if someone has said God, you know, God will pray over them and make them well, then why did he let my dad die? suffer for all of his life of addiction and not let me get to say goodbye to him. Like, why? I just don't understand. You want to answer that? Is that what? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Sometimes when we ask for healing, it doesn't mean that he's going to get the healing here on this earth. Sometimes it means that he's going to go be with Jesus and have to get the healing when he's there. And sometimes that's more important and that's what God's plan is for someone rather than healing them here on this earth. And it's sucks and it's hard to understand why he picks certain people yeah, and why he picks others. But I mean you said that your dad had finally like given his life to God. Yeah. And maybe that's the one thing that God wanted his entire life. Maybe that's the one thing he was waiting for for your dad. To just give himself over and so then he gave him that peace and that healing and it might not be beneficial to you that that's how your dad got that peace and that healing but it is to your dad because now yes. he's, in, he's in heaven yeah. you know and it sucks but one day you're going to be there with him you know so, so he still did give that healing it's just in the, the way that you wanted it yeah. so i'm going to poke and pry a little bit here <clears throat> in a second but i had this pastor he had cancer we all prayed we wanted him healed. We, all, we laid hands on him. We prayed. We prayed a lot. Put anointing oil on him. Prayed a lot. Before he took his last breath, you could visibly see he was healed. You could see it. Like the people that were around him in that room, he, they said he sat up for the first time with no pain. He was healed. And he took his last breath. He said he sees Paul. We have to remember that God is sovereign. It means he, he knows the beginning, He knows the end, and He has control of it all. I'm going to poke a little bit because this is going to be hard for all of us because we all love Corey. But think about Corey. We're going to ride again. Dude, he, he came here and he got baptized the same day you did, Stephen. Mm -hmm. And we watched Corey's life be changed. He wasn't 100%, but he, he was changed. God was doing something. That was the evidence that God was in him. God knows. It was a, it was, the day he came here, remember he came in to get baptized and he was the last one to walk in that door and he had his jean jacket on, you know, and he didn't care. He just wanted to get baptized. That day was divinely appointed by God and all his sovereignty because Corey gave his, he made a decision that day. You know, we can make decisions all of our life and back, back up, and back up, and go the other direction. But yeah. we saw the change in his life. Yeah. The last time I saw Corey, he was having a bad headache before he went to the hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what he was doing? He was here, and he was helping. He was climbing up and down those stairs, bringing up Christmas presents. So just leave it, leave it in God's hands. God knows what He's doing. When He takes me home, don't cry for me. I'm, I'm with Him. You know, when, when, when he took your dad home, the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So your dad is in a better place than all of us. If there was any bad feelings in heaven, he'd be feeling bad for us. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> your life is in track with where God has you. Your dad's life was in track with where God had him. I've seen it many times where God delivers somebody and they start walking with him shortly after they pass away. God knows what he's doing. Just leave it in his hands. Amen. The thing about that day when he cried, I was baptized. One of my favorite, my favorite moment of that day wasn't when I raised my hands up. But it's this picture right here. Yep. Looking yep. at the smile on my brother's face as he just stood there grinning like no one. Yep, I remember that. I'm standing right next to him. 
You guys, every one of you had an appointment with God. He's got a plan for you. Corey's up there waiting for you. But while you're here, while you're here, work on, you work on that deep-rooted stuff that we're talking about today. How many of us have some deep-rooted stuff? Yes. Okay, I'm going to say a prayer right now. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we do it in prayer. First, we have to recognize it, and we have to give it to the Lord. And He may not take it right away because we still want to hang on. So it might happen. I, I, I say it's like an onion, okay? Think of an onion in your hand, and every time that feeling comes upon you, you, you take a layer off. You say, God, take this from me. I don't want it anymore. And you just keep taking the layers off every time you feel that. One day you can cry. And one day, you're not going to have anything left but an open hand to receive. Amen. Amen. Amen? Father God, in Jesus' name, we come before your throne of glory. Father, I just want to pray on behalf of all my brothers and sisters here today, and myself included, Father. We can all be bitter. We can, we can all be angry. This world was not fair to us. But it wasn't supposed to be. Through your pain, through your heartache, through your struggle, there was a God that entered into your life because you raised, lifted up your eyes and your hands to him. You said, help me. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to let him hear this prayer right now. Because this has to be a daily prayer. Father, I want to live for you. I don't want to ever be out of step with you. And Lord, I just ask right now that you just get that holy hand of yours and reach it deep into the heart of Stephen. Deep into the heart of my brother Andrew. Deep into the heart of my brother AJ. To those deep roots. And everyone who raised their hands a second ago that have some deep-rooted issues. Amen. Lord, send your spirit, Father God. We have faith. We have faith greater than a size of a mustard seed. So this has to go in the name of Jesus. Can you feel it being taken, Steve? Give it away. Tell him, take it in Jesus' name. Take this alcohol from me in Jesus' name. Take this drug in Jesus' name. It doesn't belong to you. Jesus came to set you free. You have the power to cast these things out. You have the power to bind these negative thoughts. Do it like this. In Jesus' name, alcohol, I bind you. And I cast you out of my life. In Jesus' name, resentment, unforgiveness, I bind you and I cast you out of my life. This is how you pray. This is how you talk to God. This is how you talk to those things in your life. This is how you command them to believe. In prayer. <clears throat> and when you're hurting and when you're struggling, just get into prayer with God. When things are good, let's be thankful to God. Let's give Him the glory. When we're in this battle, in the trenches, let's be thankful that God is with us. Let's be thankful that we have brothers and sisters in this room. Lord, help us, Lord, to do this daily. Lord, to put your armor on us daily, Father. It's a spiritual armor, Father God. The helmet of salvation, Lord, let us pray for that every day. That our thoughts are, co are, are connected with yours. And when the enemy comes with his lies, Lord, that they just bounce off. And, and that we can just recognize them and say, I'm not accepting that today. I'm a child of living God today. I was a child of the living God yesterday. I was a child of the living God the day that I accepted him. And that's the way it's going to be for the rest of my life. There's no sin in me. There's no brokenness in me. Because the breastplate of salvation is on. It's a spiritual gift that Jesus gave me by paying the price with his blood. So there's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no stain. And there's no sin. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I just pray that you get that belt of truth on us, Lord, that we just dig into your word. And Lord, once we get it in our mind, in our heart, Father God, 
We can strike the enemy with that word, the sword of the Spirit. We can, when he says I'm worthless, I can show him the scripture that says that we're royalty, that God sees me as a king and a priest, a holy nation. And Father, that shield of faith, Father God, let it grow. Let us get rid of the bitterness and the, and the hurt and so that nothing hinders us from being used by you, Father. And Lord, the, the gospel of peace shot on our feet. Lord, that wherever we go, we have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah, this world is messed up. Everything is broken. But I'm at peace because I have the King of Kings, the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, paved the way for me. And lastly, we don't talk about this much as a weapon, but prayer is our greatest weapon. And if you pray and it doesn't go, pray again. And if you pray and it doesn't go, pray and pray again. And then there's fasting. Fasting where we deny our flesh. We deny our flesh to things. Remember that prayer every day, brothers and sisters. Remember to put your armor on every day. Because the minute you walk out, the minute you open up your eyes, there's an enemy who's attacking. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remember 9-11? Who, who's old enough to remember 9-11? I drew a picture of it. <clears throat> Do you remember how the whole world came together? The whole country came together? Yeah. The, the whole, every, everybody in America forgot about their problems for a little while. And then when things kind of got back to normal, they fell off, you know. But what I'm saying is the war that we're facing now hasn't ended. It's not going to end until the day God takes us home. So we need to stay in unity. We need to lift each other up. We need to pray for each other. If you're hurting, let us know. If you need prayer, let us know. We'll do that. If you need someone to just be in your corner when you're hurting, you know, you got to get some stuff off your chest. That's why Tina put this beautiful place together. You're not alone. The very fact that the devil has attacked everyone in this room. Look around this room. He, his, we have to see that. Just like the attack on the two towers. Yeah, tonight. just like that. Amen. And this war isn't over. So we need to stay together. We need to pray for each other, encourage each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tina, will you close us in prayer? That's right. And I pray for anyone in this room just that that has addiction, Father, that, that they will recognize their need for you. Amen. 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 If anybody wants to come up for prayer.